Hey guys, Tom here again from SynthHacker.com. Welcome back to another sound design tutorial. Um, in this one, we're gonna be taking a look at kind of like a pad key hybrid sound. Um, there's multiple layers going on. Um, the track that I used for inspiration uh, was actually a track by an artist called Rufus. Um, the track's called Inner Bloom. I've actually had a few requests for that one from you guys as well. Um, and it's this really cool like pad sound at the beginning. Um, it's quite long, um, but you'll hear one of the layers slowly start to come in. Um, really cool cinematic feel and yeah, just let you listen to it and then we'll um, start kind of pulling it apart. So quite a long demo, I know, but I really think to kind of appreciate um, how nice that sound it, um, actually is, you know, it's kind of necessary to show it in the, like a, the context of what it would probably be used. Um, and yeah, there is like four different layers going on here. We have like a nice b uh, bass layer, um, two just normal chord layers, and then a noise layer on top, which we'll get into. Um, so to start with, let's just take a look quickly at the bass layer. Um, if you guys are also interested in the actual chords themselves, by the way, um, you can see them on screen at the minute, so you can just pause and, and uh, jot them down or whatever. Um, but yeah, if we just start with the bass layer first of all, um, all four layers here are just using Serum and then a couple of external effects that I'll get into. Um, but if I open our first instance of Serum here, you can see really basic sound, um, just a mono synth, low pass 24 dB filter. Uh, with the sub bass set to minus one octave and then an oscillator stat um, just an octave above it. Um, no effects or anything like that, so that's pretty straightforward um, if you want to get the same kind of bass sound that I was using. Um, not much processing at all as well. Um, the reason I think it's important for these pad sounds to layer a bass layer underneath is because this lets you have a lot more um, kind of creative freedom with the other layers of the pad, um, simply because you don't have to worry about like putting these really super low frequencies through reverbs and delays and stuff like that. Um, so that's something to, to really bear in mind. So if we go into our first layer here, um, I'll just solo this and play you that. So that's really the kind of like more, I guess, key sound um, part of this. And like I said, it is kind of a hybrid almost between a pad and a key sound. Um, so let's go ahead and look in this. I was actually going to use Tremolator, but just ignore that for now. I'll actually get rid of it because um, I actually achieved something similar within the Serum itself. So this first layer then, let's take a look at it. Um, we're actually only using one oscillator um, uh, for this sound, um, and again, it's just a saw wave, um, with four, use, uh, four voices of unison, sorry, slightly detuned apart. Um, we also have this LFO um, 3 set up here um, on the level um, with quite a slow, um, slow rate. And this is just basically a really nice, slow, gentle tremolator effect. Um, like you could also use kind of like an actual tremolator plugin. Um, but yeah, this just adds a nice little subtle bit of movement um, that I really like. Um, and then we just have a basic low pass 18 dB filter, um, nothing too special here. Uh, but what really makes this part of the sound interesting is what I did with this LFO here. Um, when I listened to Rufus's original um, track and listened to this like key sound, um, it almost sounded like it was like recorded to tape and then like ever so slightly slowed down, slowed down or sped up in parts. Um, and so to create a really similar effect, what I did was actually set up this really subtle LFO with just subtle changes in movement. And if we go into 
the matrix tab here, you can see that I've set up this LFO to modulate the master tune of the whole synth. And what this does is, if I play it back, you might be able to notice it a little bit more if you keep your eye on the LFO. You can hear like really subtle pitch variations, which is really cool. So if we just solo that. You can really tell it's really subtle, but it adds a lot of character and it really makes it sound um, a lot more like an analog synth or something like that. Um, and that's actually the first time I've tried something like this, just really subtle changes over time to the master tune. Um, really cool technique I'd recommend trying out on your sounds. Um, so I think we covered everything in this tab now. If we go into the effects tab, um, I just have a basic plate reverb on this layer. Um, it's actually the layers above this one that have a little bit more reverb um, that you will have heard in the, the demo at the start. Um, but yeah, just basic plate reverb. Um, you could use an external one if you wanted. Um, and then because we already have our base layer, what I've done here is actually just roll off the low end of this layer um, just so that they don't clash basically. Um, so that covers the uh, first kind of chord layer. If we move on to our second one here, I'll just play this back for you. Um, like I said, in the demo, I actually had this slowly automate in, so I'll play it from somewhere around here. You can hear a really, really cool um, sound. It sounds quite simple, and to be honest, the actual patch is quite simple. Um, but it's really kind of layering all these individual things together that creates the, the sound as a whole. Um, I am using some external plugins on this, which I'll get into in a second. But first of all, I'll just show you within the synth itself and kind of what's going on. Um, we have like a really slow attack um, envelope on this and just a little bit of release as well. Um, I also set up just a pretty slow moving LFO on the fine tune of oscillator A here to again just create that really nice analog sound in pitch drift. Um, you could also set this up on oscillator B as well if you wanted. Um, but yeah, we're using the hyper wavetable which you can find in digital and go to hyper. Uh, three voices of unison, slightly detuned from one another. Um, oscillator B is just a saw wave with seven voices, voices of detune, but there's, there's really way more um, detune on this. Um, and also, if we go into the effects, again, um, just a bit of reverb and EQ. Um, I've actually EQ'd out even um, more of the low end of this synth. Um, if you watch my um, how to layer synth video that I uploaded not too long ago, and I highly recommend checking that out, um, you'll have noticed that I mentioned in that when you know you're, you're um, adding multiple layers together, it's always a good idea to allow the different layers to exist within its own area of the frequency spectrum so that you kind of avoid the different layers masking each other and covering each other up. Um, but yeah, just basic whole reverb with those parameters there. Um, if we go into the global tab, you can see the width is 100% uh, as well, which is actually uh, something I should have mentioned in layer one. If we go back into the global tab, um, I've actually reduced the width of the voices for this. And so what happens is when the sound first comes in um, and you just hear this, um, the, the, the first layer chord that we created. Um, what happens is over time, as this second layer gets uh, louder, what happens is the sound not only opens up um, by adding a new layer, but it also becomes much wider, which is a really cool effect that I really like. Um, so that's something to bear in mind as well. So I think we covered everything in layer two. Let's just quickly take a look at the external effects I put on. Um, I actually put on, uh, as well as the using the global unison width to make the sound as wide as possible. I also added Isotope um, Ozone's um, stereo imaging plugin. Um, and that's some, uh, getting a good stereo imaging plugin, I think is it can be really, really useful. I'd highly recommend this one, or um, I'm sure there's some like cheaper or even free ones out there as well if you um, just have a look around. Um, but yeah, I'll show you the difference before and after here. Um, I'll just mute the reverb for now as well. So that's without, and then with.
you can hear there it adds tons of width, which is really cool. Um, the other plugin I put on is one that I really like. It's a really cool reverb um, called Valhalla Shimmer. Um, I'm, so, I'm sure a lot of you guys have already checked out the Valhalla plugins before. Um, but basically what you just want here is just a really big uh, reverb. Um, the cool thing about Valhalla um, Shimmer as well that I really like for these type of sounds is um, it's actually got pitch modes that allow you to add... Um, add like frequencies an octave or two above the actual original sound which is why it's actually called Valhalla Shimmer because it adds like a really nice um, shimmery effect which I really like. Um, so really cool plugin um, I'd recommend checking it out. If you don't have Valhalla Shimmer uh, what I'd recommend using is just uh, whatever reverb you usually use but with like a really big size um, just to like really open the sound up a lot. Um, so that covers our two chord layers. Um, the next thing to mention is something that you might have noticed or not, I'm not sure. Um, it's just quite a, like a subtle layer that, that I noticed in the actual original Rufus track as well, was it, it had this almost like vinyl crackle just like kind of floating over it. Um, and what I did instead was actually um, still using Serum, um, I found a really nice fire crackle um, sound. Um, it's actually on freesound.org. Um, if you go to freesound.org and then just type in like fire crackle, there's a ton you can use. Um, or you could search for like vinyl crackles and stuff like that. Um, I'll just show you the sound here. So it's not much on its own, but when it's layered over everything else, it really adds a really nice texture. Really, really cool. Um, and so if I just show you how I actually set this up, um, if we go into Serum here, you can actually see um, the fire crackle noise um, selected in the noise oscillator. Um, and of course, if you go into the actual noise oscillator, you have all these like really cool um, included sounds. Um, but what I really like to do a lot of the time in some of my own personal patches I make with Serum is um, actually just find my own noise sources to use. And there's, like I said, there's tons you can find on places like freesound.org and stuff like that. Um, and all you have to do is download that sound, go find your uh, Serum user folder and your documents and then just um, just put the, the sound that you like into the u like a user folder or something like that and you'll be able to access it uh, from Serum. Um, I also randomized the phase of the noise just so every time a key hits it doesn't start the noise from the exact same space again uh, place I should say in, in the in the waveform um, so that it does kind of feel more organic from chord to chord and it's not always starting from the exact same point. Um, again, just a slow attack um, on the amplitude envelope with quite a long uh, release. I don't think there's much else going on. Um, I did really, really high pass this. Um, again, it's always great to make sure everything's just existing within its own frequency spectrum to avoid masking. Um, again, just a whole reverb on this, and I actually just duplicated the Valhalla Shimmer reverb uh, from layer 2 and put it on that because, again, Putting two different layers uh, within the, with the same uh, reverb is a really great way to kind of glue stuff together and put it in the same space. Um, and again, I just use Isoso Isotope's Ozone, uh, Ozone sorry, uh, imaging plugin to really kind of spread the width of the sound as well. Um, so that pretty much covers the sound, guys. Just to kind of give you a recap for these types of sounds, um, like I said, it is kind of like a hybrid key pad sound. Um, What's really cool about kind of layering a key and a pad sound is they, the key and the pad sound both give each other context and basically um, give each other depth. Um, the thing with creating like deep sounds is um, if there's nothing else in the mix that does sound a bit closer up, um, the deep sound doesn't sound as deep because there's nothing to listen to it like relatively. So that's something to bear in mind. Um, you do kind of, when you're creating these deep layers, you do still want part of the sound to be kind of like a little bit more upfront to really kind of put the, the sound that's further away into context. Um, but just to recap for this pad, uh, pad sound, we have just the bass layer, um, again, just low pass, and that means we can high pass everything else, which gives us a bit more freedom of room to play around with. Layer 01 is just the um, saw synth, um, like I said, with the really cool tip of using the LFO to create subtle variations in time to the master tune, if we go back into the matrix. Um, also, we've got this LFO just um, modulating over time the amplitude of the sound. Uh, layer 2 is just more of um, like a detuned pad sound using the hyper and saw waveforms um, with an LFO on the fine tune and a whole reverb again high passed. 
Um, also on this, we have the Isotope Ozone Imager plugin to make it wider, as well as Valhalla's Shimmer plugin uh, to make it sound absolutely huge. And then again, just a noise layer layered on top to add a nice little bit of texture and make it sound a little bit more organic and interesting. Um, and yeah, that pretty much covers the sound, guys. So hopefully you learn a few techniques uh, from this video um, that you can take away and kind of create your own sounds with. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, guys, be sure to and click the bell notification next to it to make sure you do actually get notified every time uh, I upload. Um, if you haven't done so already, guys, as well, definitely go ahead and follow me on Twitter. Um, you can find me at Tom Synthacker, all one word. Um, I'll leave a link um, in the description to that below as well. Um, and as always, guys, if you haven't done so already, check out my presets and sounds over at synthhacker.com. Um, some really great presets and drum sounds and stuff like that on there for you guys to check out and get some use from as well. Um, so yeah, that's all from me, guys. And uh, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video.